Yeah. 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 Did you say it earlier that Recep Tayyip Erdogan and Abdul Ghul will be candidates for the Board of Peaceful Representatives for the Islamic world? Uh, the Prime Minister of Turkey, yes. Right. Um, a few months ago, Recep Erdogan carried out anti Semitic rants in the United Nations General Assembly, and Abdul Ghul declared a plague on both your houses, uh, the houses being the United States and Israel. Um, I'm wondering how we can eliminate yeah, militant Islamic action in Afghanistan. With the help of neo ottoman with the help of neo ottomans like Erdogan and Gould. Uh, these people are looking out only for their own interests and not for ours. Thank you. I yield the remainder of my time to be delegate. Scott Beard, Pencil uh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Although I agree that we must show the Afghan people that we care, this proposal does nothing but give us more talk. Talk is cheap. We've been talking for nine years about how to build up Afghanistan, and while we've been talking and talking, there are people over in Afghanistan who are building schools, building hospitals, planting crops, and teaching the Afghan people how to be a free and democratic nation. As Morgan Freeman said in the movie Invictus, now is the time to build this nation. He did not say, now is the time to talk about it which is what, this is what all these summits will accomplish. According to the current plan for Afghanistan, all U.S. troops must be withdrawn by July 2011. These summits will take time, and even if they do amount to something, by the time it is implemented, the troops will be out and the Taliban will most likely try to save in the attack. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, sir, Chair. Ladies and gentlemen, in response to introduce yourself? Oh, Rex Oklahoma. In response to a former delegate who spoke of time, I would like to remind you that it took it has been nine years of military action and nothing has gotten better. Giving confidence and assistance to the Afghan government will therefore logically suppress the problem we face. In a war where our enemy cannot be readily identified, the government becomes our best best ally against the invisible threat we face. With this proposal, the United States can target the true intent of Operation Enduring Freedom, creating democracy in a war-torn world. Members of the Washington D.C. delegation also recall my right to reserve my remaining time for the delegate body from Mississippi. That is right. There's a couple of things we need to consider about this piece of legislation as Americans. Uh, an example of the American Revolution in the British was brought up, but the British didn't pour acid on women. The British didn't engage in the dealing of drugs. The British were a uh, recognized, civilized government. The Taliban is not. Uh, it was mentioned that, well, we, the Taliban people want to have uh, freedom and democracy. Letting loose the Taliban once again is not freedom and democracy. <laughs> Truly, if you were ever to consider the, the parallels between the American Revolution and the war in Afghanistan, you'd realize that there are none. Uh, we need to, giving the Taliban re legitimacy in a situation like this is not the solution to the problem. You don't give legitimacy to those who pour acid on women. You do not give legitimacy to those who deal with drugs. In America today, we do not sit down and negotiate with drug dealers. We put them in jail. Like so, we do not do that in an international situation. Did you want to solve the problem? We solve with hard power. We've been in there for nine years and finally have a troop search to solve the problem. Do not disrespect what our troops have done. Do not disrespect the Afghan people by once again instituting the regime that put them in the first place. And I yield to remember my time. Body for Mississippi, I want to bring up two points. Okay. Mississippi Thank body. You. The President of the United States quoted, he said, when I said that we were going to be out by January 2011, I didn't mean we were going to be closing the door and turning the lights off. Secondly, I want to point out a problem. President Karzai of Afghanistan admitted himself that he'd be willing to negotiate with the Taliban. Willing to negotiate with the Taliban. People who have been killing innocent people for God knows how long. And I want to point out another thing. We can't fix War, war is nothing you do softly. It must be done with an iron fist. We did it with Adolf Hitler, we did it with Hirohito in Japan, and we can do it again. And if it worked for World War II, it can work for Afghanistan. And don't tell me the true service didn't work, because President Obama, when he voted Thank you, Speaker. We're now here for our final press speaker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Colleague Caroline Zeller, delegate.
association, I reserve my right to other making that question. That is just In an age of guerrilla warfare, and in, in a war without front lines, the American army's might alone will never be enough. The Vietnam War clearly illustrated to the American people and the world that without the support of the native population, the U.S. cannot win a guerrilla war. The U.S. must engage in diplomatic, political, and religious summits in order to create trust and to win the hearts and minds of the Afghan people. Further, our humanity compels us to rely not solely on war, but also on peaceful discussion and mediation. As a world leader, the United States has the responsibility to display its willingness to engage in diplomacy rather than simply relying on brute force. Ward from Kentucky, Sir Terry, and I would like to reserve my right to my time to New Jersey. To clarify something, opium is a drug found in heroin. The definition is narcotic. Um, a narcotic drug produced from drying resin of poppy. I applaud the author for the intent of his proposal, yet there are a few fundamental flaws. The main being the infeasibility of finding any other ways to benefit the economy other than opium. Now, I'm not an ad advocate for drugs, but the drug trade in Afghanistan is a major part of their economy. Opium itself gives $2.7 billion to the economy, and as one of the ingredients con contrib contributing to heroin, it gives an additional $194.4 $94.4 billion to the economy. Now, not only is the U.S. intertwined with this illegal business, the CIA controls most major heroin routes and is said to protect the trade wholly. Uh, the U.S. government claims this trade is a, male is a male factor to the Afghan government. But in reality, the proceeds from this business help foreign wealth in poor and disorganized countries. If you support this proposal, you are supporting the downfall of an already failing nation's economy. I reserve my right to yield. I'm the Mariahs from New Jersey. Thank you, Sir Chair. Um, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to keep this short. America does not negotiate with terrorists. Thank you very much. <laughs>